Uh, right, thank you everybody for, uh, for turning up. Um, welcome to another set of MCC group results. Um, and certainly it's, uh, it's a pretty proud day. Great set of numbers that I'd like to talk you through. Um, and take you through both the acquisition of Open Registry and talk to you in a bit more depth about what's happening in domain services. Um, the agenda is fairly standard. We'll start with the highlights, Apple will do the numbers, and we'll take the divisions uh, to pieces and explain what's happening within them before we move on to domain services. The highlights. Where can you begin? What a great set of numbers. Um, group revenue is up by 15% by overall. Assurance has seen a tremendous performance, 20% growth. Escrow up 4%. Cash conversion, 105% of operating profits. Adjusted operating profits up 6%. Escrow profits up by 6%. Assurance profits up by 23%. It really has been a very, very strong half year. Uh, particularly, I must draw attention to the assurance division, uh, where we've seen a tremendous performance out of security consultancy, and especially out of North America. The North American business now is a substantial part of what we do, working with very illustrious clients and delivering some of the highest standard of work that you can imagine to very demanding individuals, I hasten to add. So seeing that result is absolutely stunning. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. Adjusted diluted EPS up 6% and the interim div dividend following our progressive dividend policy of an increase in 14%, which again reflects the confidence that we've got in the second half of the year for the group's performance. The order book, of course, is increasing, as you would expect, but actually we've got some pretty highlights, pretty big highlights to talk about as well. You know, Trust, Doc Trust is launched, it's going through the ICANN process, it's virtually there. It will appear live in the route in the next few weeks, months or so. It's outside of everyone's control now. It's actually following a, 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 a well-trodden path of being delegated. And so we expect nccgroup.trust to turn up in as the first customer somewhere around about March. And the final bit is yesterday we announced the acquisition of Open Registry. And I have to say, for us, it's a really exciting moment. It completes the end-to-end -end solution that we desperately need to make domain services a unique business in the internet today. It really will offer global brands and global organizations something completely different and something they really do require to make the internet a safer place for them. It actually gives us the complete wherewithal to deliver a total solution. And actually, that's why we're very excited about it. Now, the other bit, of course, is every acquisition we do is based on earnouts. And the numbers that they've got are brilliant. And they'll deserve that level of earnout that they're going to get if they hit them. And actually, will probably be the best deal I've ever done in my life. Not only are we starting off buying a great piece of technology, great individuals, and great access to fantastic clients and customers, as well as opening opportunities in both the registrar and registry marketplace. But the opportunities they've got to then join up with us and grow are unrivaled in any business I've acquired so far. So we really are very excited by that one. And we'll talk a little bit more about it later. So I'll hand over to Atul, who'll talk you through the numbers. Thank you. Good morning. I'll start on the revenue. Um, firstly, the group has had a very strong first half of the year with overall growth of 15% and on a constant currency basis, 17%. This has been led by the security consulting business, which has shown very strong growth of 33% and 35% on a constant currency basis. At the start of this financial year, we took the UK software testing and web performance businesses and combined them under a single management team. One of the decisions that management team took was to actually relinquish some very low margin business that we had, mainly because it was a drag on management time and delivered little returns, hence why uh, there is a decline in that business. Underlying the web performance business uh, continues to grow, and for next year we will see growth coming out of the software testing and web performance business. In terms of international mix of business, almost 50% of our business is now coming from overseas. That's quite a 
significant shift over the last few years. And particularly in terms of the rest of the world, the majority of that rest of the world figure actually relates to the US. So there is a significant movement in terms of our international mix. In terms of profitability, escrow, our very high margin, high cash generative business, continues to increase its margin and delivered a 6% increase in its profits. Our half-year margin for assurance also ticked up from 16 to 17%. We're still aiming for 20%. And actually, in terms of the way our margins work, they're quite back-end loaded. So I expect the full-year margin for both of those businesses to be higher. So overall, operating contribution has increased by 14%. And you'll see in terms of our dividend, um, the dividend that's uh, interim dividend that will be paid will be 1.3p, 14% growth, and that's in line with our progressive dividend policy. In terms of understanding the adjustments from uh, reported profit um, to adjusted profit, firstly, on the left-hand side, 14.3 million is the operating profit from our core business, from our escrow and assurance business. That's a 14% growth. From that, you deduct domain services expenditure, and in terms of the various categories of adjustments, they're all the same categories that we always have. Probably the key difference to note this year is that there is a slight exceptional cost. While the same period last year, there was exceptional profit relating to the release of deferred consideration of 1.9 million. So that obviously affects the, uh, the pre-tax profit movement. If I now move to uh, cash um, and the balance sheet, we continue to have very strong cash conversion, 105%, and that's despite the continuing shift in terms of the mix of business between uh, escrow and assurance. In terms of our banking facility, earlier this month, we increased our banking facility from a 40 million facility to 55 million, based on the same terms that we enjoyed previously. And the other thing is we still have more headroom with the bank if we did want to increase that further. I will come on to capital expenditure. But in terms of de deferred consideration, the maximum deferred consideration we have is 8.8 .8 million, and it's all profit-based. It's all about delivering future profits. The majority of that 8.8 .8 million relates to the open registry group of companies. Two key things to note. One is the management have heavily incentivized to deliver profit growth because a significant element of the consideration is actually deferred. And you'll also notice in terms of the time frame is that over a three year period, so the first earn out payment isn't due for over two years. So that's important in terms of the, the incentivization we have within the business to grow um, profits. If I move to the cash flow, The largest item or the main use of cash is the capex. Almost half of that capex relates to domain services. And within that domain services uh, is also the cost of acquiring dot trust. In the second half of the year, we expect that to significantly reduce. Plus we will receive the proceeds from dot secure, which are higher than the cost of dot trust. In terms of the remaining capex, it's primarily re in relation to uh, our infrastructure, both in terms of our office infrastructure and our technology infrastructure. That will continue through the second half of the year and into future years as we continue to support the strong grow underlying growth of the business. I'll now hand over back to Rob. Great, thanks. That was my mother texting me to say the results are very good. She's a proud shareholder, I hasten to add. <laughs> Never had that one before. Um, okay, let's move into the divisions. Obviously, escrow, cornerstone of the business. You know, cash and profits are sanity and king here. Brilliant performance. Remember, this is our quiet, quiet performance, our quiet period, so the performance is pretty strong. Uh, revenues have grown. The European business on a constant currency basis has grown and we've got the US back into double digits and that's what we'll come to show. We've got a new MD running the 
uh, division, Daniel Liptrop, he's been known to us for a number of years, very senior operator, legal background, absolutely perfect for the escrow business. He of course replaced Pete Stock, who you all met, who's moved to Domain Services and is running that out of San Francisco and obviously is going to be clocking up the air miles we'd expect. Again, UK has seen price increases grow. Much more importantly is actually termination rates have come down mainly due to our good works, you know, working very hard to make sure we don't lose any, any contracts with customers where we possibly can. And for the first time in about seven years, it's down to 11%. We've always run at about 12%. And again, just reflecting on what I'd already said, US revenues, double-digit growth, escrow Europe growing at 2% on a constant currency basis. Now, it's not going to grow massively, the European business. It's a little bit subscale. But we're very pleased with it, it's very profitable, and actually they're working very well with the team. Actually what it also provides is that cover for European international customers. You know, the security market has proliferated. It's become obviously a lot harder to recruit and retain high quality people. But one thing NCC Group's always prided itself at is being able to do that. Finding the right locations to put the right people to meet their expectations of life. That's the culture that they operate in and the location. So that's why we've seen growth in all of our offices now. You'll hear me reference Spain. Why are we in Spain? Well, Spain actually has a fearsomely good selection of security professionals. And of course, as we know, despite the downturn in the Spanish economy, the quality of education is quite formidable. And of course, we're an international business. <coughs> So actually setting up a location in Spain where Spanish nationals can work for us and travel around the globe makes common sense. And our reputation and draw is good enough to be able to start from scratch a small office in a country we've never been to. That's how good the NCC group reputation is. And that shows in the numbers. We're looking at a 20% overall growth. We're looking at margin moving up. We're globally recognized for presentations, white papers, and various pieces we, re we re release that you'll see. And in the numbers themselves, in security consultancy, we're looking at a 35% growth on constant currency basis. We've got over 380 security professionals. The US has grown by 41%. This is shooting the lights out sort of numbers. Now, is it going to continue? I would temper everyone's enthusiasm. Why? Obviously, to get to these numbers, and despite this, the huge scale we've now got in this business area, we still have to do all the right things. We are running a bit hot on utilisation. So we're going to be making sure that by the end of the year, our guys are running at the levels of research they expect and the utilisation around about 60%. So I would not be suggesting that people think about this continuing at a rate of growth of 35% overall. It will still be a remarkably strong performance, but I just put that caution down. Software testing and web performance, Atoll's already alluded to it. You know, this is how we run the business, actually. These two business areas live together. Obviously, within that, you know, the renewals in, uh, in, in web performance is showing a very strong performance. Renewal rates are about 91%. But within software testing, we chose to relinquish some contracts. Working for two or three percentage points with very, very difficult and complex customers, frankly, is not the kind of business we need to be in. So I'm quite happy to let that sort of business go. There's plenty of other good areas for us to grow. And that's one that I didn't feel was appropriate for us to continue in. And now we move to domain services. Now, domain services is, I think it's fair to say, an extremely dynamic and very fast-growing part of the market. The whole world of the internet is actually radically changing. You know, what is a registrar? What is a registry? What do they all do? Why do we need them? Who does what? Yeah, well, now put yourselves in the position of a typical, ordinary corporate organisation. They don't know this either. You know, the internet's existed for not that long, really, since the early 80s. It's proliferated from being 20-odd domains to 1,400. You talk to most CEOs, COOs, they haven't got a clue about half of this. So actually, one of the big things is actually trying to educate them. But more as they become educated, they start to work out 
that to operate on the internet today, you have a multiple number of providers, all providing different services, all that are completely different, random, and often don't actually tie up together too well. One of the big things we learned from the target hack was actually having too many people having connectivity with you creates huge vulnerabilities. If we remember Target, it was the air conditioning and maintenance company that actually allowed the breach and infection of Target systems. Okay, internal failings as well. But that's how it happened. So suddenly, just to operate on the internet, you've got all these different people who are having relationships with you. And as we get to understand it better, and as they start to understand it better, they come back to, <coughs> why can't we do all of this with one person? Why can't we have an end-to-end -end solution? And more importantly, why can't we put security in it? Why do we have to get our security from somebody else who isn't our registrar or isn't our registry? Being a registry means that you're providing the back-end operation. You can provide the services, you can run your own domain yourself as an organisation. Some brands are wanting to do that. Well, why can't you make it secure for us? Why can't you do this? Why can't you do the other? So that's been the whole strategy. Now, going right back to the early initiation of domain services, I've talked about making sure that we had the complete solution. Some of you will remember that we talked about investing in a registrar. Now, actually, for us to create registrar software was very expensive. We predicted it would cost us about half a million. I probably got that wrong by a factor of 10. So it's an area that we didn't stray into too much for ourselves. And we actually went around looking at who we could pick up and who we could acquire. Because one of the important bits about managing your domain portfolio is being able to have access to offer that complete service to, to customers. So with Open Registry, we now can provide total brand protection. What we've actually got within there is a registry. That's a back-end operator. That's the bit that puts the IP into the internet. Very proven and very capable technology. Will we be moving to use our own back-end operator? You bet we will. Of course we will. That will be something we'll obviously do. The other part of what we wanted was to have the registrar. We wanted to provide that complete service for domain management. And within the group of companies, we got Nexpertine. Small, perfectly formed, but with all the capabilities to grow. And the final bit is actually one of the best assets we've acquired. It's being part of the triumvirate operating the trade, trade, trademark clearinghouse. And that is the business that makes sure that whenever anyone applies for a domain name, that if it breaches a trademark, the trademark owner is told. It also highlights when a new domain comes into existence which ones there are and which ones you should be registering because you've got that trademark. So actually, as a connection point with the brands and large corporates, it couldn't be better. And there are 33,000 verified trademarks. And we sit alongside IBM and Deloitte in operating that service. Which gives us Again, a great connection. So how does that link in with trust? Well, trust is going to be sold to people who are very brand aware. People who recognise the need and importance of creating a safe environment for their customers to operate and for their brand to be protected. As we go on the journey, we discover that actually the people who really understand it are the 600 brands that exist in the marketplace today. They're the ones who've registered the domain, so they're going to be going out at some stage. Now, nearly all of them have delayed the process of going, into the, going onto the web immediately, so they're not starting to come through, probably for most of them, until about July. Why? Because they don't quite know what to do with it. They know they should have it, and they know they should use it, but how should they use it? It's actually a much bigger decision than they first thought, and actually we thought. So our target's always going to be those, and also the ones who don't have a brand. They haven't registered it. Because they too are now recognising that with the proliferation of names, they need to have some competitive advantage. But again, which competitive advantage to pick up? So that's what we've seen. We've seen it's just been a bit harder to get decisions to be made quickly. 
I can certainly categorically confirm that we've seen no fall away in interest or no fall away in opportunity. If anything, it's increased. If anything, as we get closer to working with some of the, the 600 brands, the recognition that actually they need to have a secure environment, either operating their GTLD or using part of ours, has gone up considerably. That's, again, part of the reason we've slightly changed the way that we're selling it. The interesting bit is actually the, ma the, the managed monitoring service we offer. You'll see in the actual statement that I draw attention to the number of IPs that we scan already. That's our managed services division. We already do a lot of this for customers. The tool we've actually created is a step way ahead of that. And actually, as an early intro point for a set of domains, it's a really useful way to actually start monitoring yourself against benchmark standards. The security standards we put out have been largely accepted. The security industry do really recognize them and think they're a formidable piece of work. So organizations are looking at using our tool to manage against those security policies to think what they're going to do with either their own domain or using part of ours, the trust domain. Again, a number of organizations have said, look, we really do want trust. We just don't quite know what to do with it. Can we just pay a placeholder? Yeah, fine. Interestingly, the cost of actually running the managed, the managed service, the service aspect of, of trust is very similar to that that we charge if they were using our managed services facilities anyway. So we'll get the same sort of revenues. It might just take a little slightly different path to get exactly the way we want it. So my expectation is we're going to see a few placeholders put down. We've already got customers who are starting to use the managed services tool and we will start taking people on the journey to if you like full fat dot trust that's going to happen I've got no doubts about that but I think we're going to see more managed services coming through in the early part of next year we've got people who are currently using it and actually typically you'd expect people to pay somewhere between 10 and 15 thousand a month for this sort of service and actually the ones we've got using it is proving quite scary because a number of these organizations really haven't had their domains attacked, for want of a better word, scanned against seven different tools because we're using not just one but multiple tools. So the opportunity, I think, is very, very strong. Of course, the perfect world, everybody will be on dot trust, and I think that will happen, but it's going to take just a fraction more time. And again, I'm sure those of you who have spoken to Apple you know, we've always confirmed that actually the impact on any of the numbers are going to be fairly minimal, if at all, in the next coming couple of years. Because we just see the revenues coming through in a slightly different shape. And of course the final bit with that is Open Registry just offers more opportunity. So, the current trading. Um, yeah, we've seen an 11% uptick in group orders. Yep, we've got a security that frankly could not be better if we set out to make it our own. Escrow will continue to perform strongly. Remember that the second half of the year is traditionally our strongest half of the year. And we also expect domain services not only to deliver good results through open registry, but actually we expect to see going forward the opportunities for dot trust to start to shine. So in summary, we have to be very confident of delivering yet another strong year of growth from NCC Group.